Boom. Hola, YouTube. My name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to the episode, episode 14 of the Out of the Box. Today, I have a couple of special ones. And if you only know, if you only use the words special ones on soccer, well, you were wrong until today because today I got three special ones. So stay with me because today we're going to be speaking with Team Belgium. Let's go. Okay, and we're live, and now they know the the guests are. They knew already who the guests were because they see the <laughs> they see the cover of this. So let me start from the beginning. We need to go back in time. So to start with, thank you guys for joining. I know that you guys have been super super busy, and I'm going to start with the youngest one, <laughs> Jason. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. 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 Okay, so I'm going to start by a very normal question when we do something like this, which is, how did you got into skating? How did you got not even speed skating, just skating in general? And then how did the whole map went all the way from just a regular skater to a speed skater to a world champion speed skater? Uh, just firstly, I uh, start uh, doing athletes like uh, running on a track uh, and uh, close to the track is actually um, uh, an inline track and I saw the inline track and I wanted to try this instead so uh, that's how it started actually and then just did it some like how, how old are you? In the club. Uh, 19 now okay so how, no, how, old, how old are you when when when, you uh, when I started, uh, I was seven, seven. Okay. Okay. And then ever since, you never really stopped. It just went all the way from... So you started straight on, on, on the track. You never started just like a regular, like, just like skating. And then suddenly you saw speed skating and then you wanted to speed skate. You just started straight on speed skating. Is that it? Uh, yeah, no. In, in the beginning, it's just indoor and having fun, but... Like uh, when you're getting older, you do some uh, trainings with uh, the better guys, and then you start competitions. Uh, okay. I don't really remember anymore. <laughs> That's good. That means it was a long time ago, and yeah, that means there's yeah. more important things in your life now, and that you're not really yeah. uh, focused on the past. You're focused on the future, and we'll get there in a second. I'm gonna need to go to to Sandrine. Sandrine, uh, I know that there's not a lot of clubs in belgium and we will also get there in a second are you guys from the the same town or are you you guys from completely different parts of belgium um we're quite far apart i'm from ostend it's by the sea so i'm at one of the yeah. bigger clubs in belgium and then for example bart he skates for heavily which is another one of the belgian clubs and uh, I know that Jason kind of switched somewhere halfway through his career from uh, one club to another. But we're all kind of spread around Belgium, actually. We're not close together. Okay. okay. But, but Belgium is also not huge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Yeah. When I say we're not close together, for many countries, we're still yeah, 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 yeah. close together. Of course. But we are <laughs> like, spread over Belgium, like an hour and a half drive with the car. Apart. That's cool. Uh, it, it's funny that you say you're from Ostend because my first ever time racing as a Portuguese speed skating 
skater or as a Portuguese speed skater was in Ostend at the uh, European Junior Championships like 92, 94, 94, something like that. <laughs> anyway, that doesn't matter. We're here to, to speak about you guys and how did you got on speed skate on skates and more specifically on speed skate, Sandrine? Um, well, I'm the younger of three siblings. I have two other bo uh, older brothers that were both mm -hmm. skating. So my parents would drag me to all the, the races with them. And of course, um, always watching. I wanted to try to. And um, like that, I actually started when I was maybe four or five years old in the, in the club in Austin. And um, basically right away on speed skates. Um, and then just grow, grow through the categories. And now I am where I am today. <laughs> and we'll get to where you are in a minute too. Uh, but I need to make the same question because I don't, I'm pretty sure you've answered these questions quite a lot, Bart. But yeah. there's there might be a lot of people also that never heard about it. So how did you actually got into skates? Um, well, we're getting closer to it. Um, I got for Santa Claus together with my brothers and sisters. I have two sisters and one brother. I got speed uh, well roller skate skates. Um, the quads? You mean the quads, like one, two, three, four? No, no, no. It was in nice skates. It was in nice skates, and uh, okay. we got them for Santa Claus. And um, yeah, it was fun to do. Like uh, we had a in the back in the back of our uh, garden, we could skate on the, on them and first try them and. Um, yeah, we enjoyed it so much that we started to join the, the club RSC Hitlerly. And yeah, and how old there we all started. Um, between seven and eight, I think. I think eight years old, yeah. Okay. So you guys all started like young, obviously. Yeah, pretty and... young. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's quite interesting because we, in some of these out-of-the-box episodes, we actually interviewed some people that started a lot later and they still got very good results yeah. which which i always thought it was interesting in such a short amount of time to get good results but obviously with you guys it's been different now you all started with clubs and i'm gonna need to make the next question which is is there a lot of clubs in belgium we're gonna try to understand a little bit more about your country and about speed skating in your country so maybe jason or sandrine one of you is there a lot of is there a lot of clubs in all like spread all over Belgium or how many clubs do you guys have? Uh, clubs? No, actually, actually there's not a lot. Um, I think maybe five or six, it won't be more. Mm. And half of them don't even have a proper inline track. Um, there's only one Vesmago track in whole of Belgium and it's in my club in Austin. For example, Bart skates a lot on a 400 meter track. Yep. Um, so the, the facilities for inline skating in Belgium, there's not so many, but that makes it even more special that we manage to get good results as a country because um, there isn't many opportunities, like many different clubs or tracks and so on. Why do you think I called you guys special ones? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Jason, when there's nationals, you, you guys have uh, nationals every year, right? You have the uh, Belgian yeah. nationals. Yeah. yeah. How many how many skaters do you have approximately per category? Do you have an idea? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, with the senior guys, maybe 10, 15, yeah. no, 50, I think. Because Sandford has like 10 guys. <laughs> nationals. And like the and the and what about like the, the younger generation? Do you have a lot to choose from, or it's also not that many people to? No, not not that many. Also, I don't know how much. Yet. Yeah, what's the younger generation? I don't know. Indra maybe. Indra, me, Brecht, <laughs> um, a few no, other like guys. Really, I think. No, I think really they young. mean yeah, the really young guys. <laughs> the really young ones. There's a little ah, bit yeah, more than in the senior categories, but still not not like yeah, you can yeah. see in Italy and Portugal and Spain no. and so on. It's yeah. not a lot. Okay. Yeah, and I also yeah, I think it also depends from generation to generation. Like uh, I had a for for Belgium standards, I had a pretty good generation, a pretty big one. Um, and then you have other years where it's only three or four guys, and then um, and so it changes from year to year, I think. And 
usually you see it also um, in Belgium when you have a good generation, then people stay longer and they think it's more interesting if you can always race against 10 guys or, or something. And um, yeah. Usually, the, there are some good guys always coming out of it. Uh, you can see also with Sandrine, they always had uh, some nice battles, and um, then then it's easy. Yeah, then you push each other to the next limit. That's but you, your guys gave me a bit of the same answer, and that's exactly what I wanted to get, which is it's it's very special that you guys, without as much of a world to choose from. You know what I'm I'm saying? It's like there's there's not like as many skaters as you as you said, like in Italy, as an example. But you still manage to make amazing results. A good example would be <laughs> when it comes to like the Belgian team. How do you guys manage? And this can be a question for the two of you guys, like Sandrine and Bart, have been part of the 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 Belgian team for for a longer period of time. How do you guys manage with eight guys to go to Worlds and bring more medals than Team Italy with 40 guys? And <laughs> I'm not putting anyone down the line, but it's, it's just, it's, it's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Why you want to take this one? <laughs> uh, well, I, I think we, like, the guys who are going usually have a really high level. And, and um, I think that's always starting also in the clubs um, the clubs we have in Belgium it's not many but the few clubs are, are pretty good I think uh, my own club is a lot of history in there um, it used to be one of my coaches used to be Andy Lambrex who was who has uh, yeah, uncountable world medals and world titles and um, then the next generation was uh, my coach who's Jelle Spread now he He used to race against Chad Hedrick and all those guys, so he has a lot of experience. And yeah, that's something we, all, the, all that experience we, we use and we get from them. And I think you have the same story in, in Zandvoort as well. There you have uh, Quinton, Sandrini's brother, is coaching, but he also had really good coaches and a lot of experience from before. And so the clubs we have, we have in Belgium, the two or three clubs are really, really good. And that's why we can have good results with eight guys. <laughs> um, but it would be nice if we get more and more skaters for sure. Of course. Sandrine, would you have a, a different opinion on anything or would you like to add anything? No, I, I think I really agree. I mean, what we have is high quality. Uh, the clubs are good. We get good support. We have good trainers, good coaches. Um, we try to have fun in training, which is also really important. And then for, for the championship, the thing is in Belgium, they don't fill up the selection with just anyone that's there, but you really need to show them that you can be a contender for the medals. And that's when you get to go. So the people that do go to a championship, which is maybe only eight people, they're all capable of skating for the medals. And that, that makes it look even stronger as a, a little small country that we we yes. can do that but that's the choice that they make in in our federation that they really only take people that can be um a metal skater okay the investment is done but they want to have anything in return now that leads me to a question to jason which is jason do you feel a lot of pressure on your shoulders because you have to like I know that some people call you Bart too. I don't know how Bart feels about it, and we'll get there too. But <laughs> to be called Bart too, it's it must feel you must feel like some pressure from your country. As Sandrine just said, you're one of the chosen ones to be representing the country of someone that have been getting so many medals. How do you feel about it? How do you deal with it? Oh, I don't know. It's Sometimes I like it because it's still a compliment uh, if they call you a mini Bart or something. But it's also <laughs> a like mini Bart is good question. too. <laughs> yeah. uh, because uh, it's also a lot of pressure when uh, somebody says, oh, you're good, you're good. You're like Bart, you will have so much medals and stuff. It's also a bit uh, like stressy before the race and stuff when you're thinking about this, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, tell me 
Do you prefer Mini Bart or Bart 2? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Bart 2, I think. <laughs> what about you, Bart? Would it be Mini Bart or Bart 2? <laughs> uh, for now, it's still Mini Bart. It? For now, it's still <laughs> Mini Bart, I think. <laughs> no. I, I think he has a lot of potential. So, uh, and, and yeah, we train often also together. Um, and, and in trading, I also see similarities. So, he. Yeah, he showed already in in the junior division that he yeah, he can win a lot, and he can he wins also the strongest races, the the points elimination, and uh, I think that's uh, one of his strengths as well. So now uh, it's for him to show also in the senior division uh, what's what he's capable of for sure. Awesome, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna be he's gonna yeah. be showing everyone that he's able to. I've seen that. I need to say congratulations on joining our slide main team. I've seen. The announcement a couple of months ago congratulations on that and yeah, since we're talking about uh, mini bart and bart 2 i also heard there's a and we i asked you guys about the younger generation so i'm gonna also need to ask about mini jason or jason 2 because i heard there's like a mini a good mini jason am i right about it jason <laughs> your brother i don't know yeah. uh, my brother yeah it's, it's possible yes it's possible you need to train a little bit harder, but uh, it's possible. Oh, that's good. I, I heard about it. That's why I was... <laughs> okay, so we were talking about how hard, how hard it was for you guys to join. Obviously, once you get to the level that you are, it's probably not as hard anymore. But to first become part of the Belgian team, it's not as easy. But you guys use a completely different system. Obviously, as you know, as as Colombia, where they have zillions of skaters and yeah. they make the, the Pan Americans and all that stuff. And like for some of them, the nationals, they say sometimes that it's harder than the world's. How do you feel about that, Bart? Um, I can understand. Would you, pref would, you pre would you prefer that? Would you prefer to have like a huge scene in your country so that when you go internationally it kind of feels easier um oh, i think you have advantages for sure like the the sport how big it is in colombia it's in no other country it is that big and um to make a career out of your sport um yeah it's easier if you have a, yeah, a lot of attention and you have a lot of sponsors and there's a lot of investment from the government and from all different clubs so yeah, it's just two different worlds if you come out of a small country or out of a big one but um if you want to work towards the world championships, um, it's easier if you are in a small country because I don't have to think about selections. I just try to be at my highest, highest level at the world championships. But of course, the downside is you have to race two very strong Colombians and sometimes it can be hard. I think, yeah, Sandrine knows she's uh, most of the time on her own. So then it's really hard to, to fight against two strong Colombians. Um, but in the future, I will have mini Jason as my teammate. So. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so mini Jason it is not Jason too. <laughs> At least for now. Okay. So, <laughs> so according to all of you guys, also it, it's it's not as easy to to become part of the Belgium team at first. And I'm gonna go back to the same. And Bart was actually saying that being in a in a bigger in a country where the sport is a lot bigger like in colombia the government would give you guys a bit of a different support but at the same time with you guys having um, a smaller team are you guys able to have good support from your government sandrine is that something that your government can provide you guys or you guys still rely a lot on your sponsors on your results and all that um, well, the Federation supports us in bringing us to the championships. Um, so being part of the national team and going to Worlds, the hotel and stuff like that. Um, but outside of that, um, we rely on Power Slide. And um, for me, also still part of my parents. So it's not like um, we're making a whole lot of money with inline skating at this point, which I think is different, mm -hmm. for example, for people like the best people in Colombia. Um, that do okay. have maybe a salary or something something like that. Let me make one question still to you. So 
this is the 14th episode and a lot of people have different like i've interviewed a lot of world champions european champions all all sorts and different countries have different types of funds and different times or different ways of supporting their skaters and it, something that it usually happens with a lot of them is when they get results they get a fund from the government as a payment as a way to support you after getting that good res that good result is that something that also happens in belgium uh, no <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, so not not really. It, I can't I can't really say that I make money with skating. Um, okay. They they I'm sure they try their best, but it's just like it's not that we get money for medals at world championships or European championships. Okay, so I I need to I need to say this right now. This Power Slide is one of those companies that I have a lot of love and passion for. Straightforward. I worked with Matthias for way too long, and I respect Matthias a lot. <laughs> And and this is another thank you for, I just think everyone should right now thank them for allowing you guys to actually do what you guys do so good. Because according to what you're telling me, if it wasn't for Power Slide, there wouldn't be Sandrine, Bart and Jason where you guys are right now. I don't know about Bart and I'm gonna get to Bart right now. Bart, is it sponsors? What is it with you? How are you able to keep skating at your age? And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know exactly your age. Maybe that would be a good way to start on that. <laughs> uh, my age is 29. So yeah, it's getting... Well, I'm one of the older guys by now in the, in the, in the peloton. And um, I think, yeah, the reason... Of course, I love to skate. I love inline skating. Um, but yeah, my biggest support for inline skating is by far uh, power slide. Um, yeah, like Sandrine said, if you are in the Belgium team, everybody has the same support. But if you get three gold medals, or if I don't win any gold medal, it doesn't matter. You, it's not that we get any bonuses or something. So the the support we get, all the three of us, is totally from from power side, and that's uh, yeah, we for sure we have to thank thank them for this because um, that's why we can compete our, our yeah why we can compete at the highest level. I think. Um, and uh, of course, I also do ice skating. Um, and for ice skating, I get uh, funding from the government. So ice skating is an Olympic sport in Belgium, uh, well, in many countries. And in Belgium, if you do an Olympic sport and you get good results, then you get uh, more and more funding. Um, but since in ice skating is not Olympic, um, there is not really much funding around. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to get to ice skating. I'm going to get to ice skating with you in a minute. Okay. But... With Sandrine, Sandrine, do you, how much pressure, and I'm sorry that I'm going in that way now, but it's just after what we just said, it maybe makes sense to make this question, which is how much pressure do you feel in your results in, able, in order to keep your, your spot on power slide at the moment? Do you ever feel that type of pressure? Because as, as we were talking right now, it's fully dependent on something. Is there a plan B? in case something ever goes the sour way? Um, actually, I never feel that pressure from Power Slide. It feels more like a family. And I know that if you have one bad year, they don't just drop you. Like, um, it's just a really nice atmosphere. And of course, if you do 10 years in a row and you, you get lost every time, they're not going to keep uh, sponsoring you but it's not like oh you skated bad uh, next year you're not on the team they're not like that it's much friendlier and a, not, a lot nicer than that um, so that pressure I definitely don't feel and my plan B is um, actually I'm still just studying um, I'm in my last year at the university so I always have that as a backup so it's not like I feel the pressure I need to skate good for my life to move forward. It's still more mm -hmm. that for me, inline skating is still just a hobby. Um, like okay. it's always been, it's something that I do with passion and not for the, for the funding or for moving my life along or something like that. So um, I can't say that I feel much pressure for money and stuff like that. It's just a hobby also, that you're one of the best in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, oh. Oh. Also, because my parents are very supportive, so my parents help yeah. me out a lot. So that that also helps me in not feeling the pressure for the money or the results and stuff like that. 
it seems to me like in inline speed skating, after all these interviews that we've been doing, parents have been probably the most important support that most of the skaters have. From, from people like you that are still studying and parents have been able to help them with that, from the people that are come from poor countries but their parents allow them to go to other countries to compete, even to the ones that have kids and they need to have the, leave their kids with their parents while they go compete for their country. Parents seem to be like a, one of the stronger, one of the most important pieces of the puzzle in this allowing us to, to, have, to be professional in something. What are you studying exactly, Sandrine? I'm sorry to ask um, you that. I but... study bioscience engineering, uh, food science and nutrition. Okay, but at, that's also at, something at that you can stay. Is that something that you can see yourself relating it with skating in the future? Um, no, not not really. Um, I really I really enjoy my studies, but it's not really um, in combination with skating. Um, okay. I hope to be when I finish studying to do some years of skating and then move on into the professional life of my job. Um, I don't think it's possible to stay at the level that I'm at while being at a full-time job. So it's never, it's never going to be a combination, I think. Okay. You're super realistic. I like that. <laughs> like, you know, some, it's, the, it's the truth. Like a lot of people live in that cloud. Like maybe you, you're just, you know what you want. Now, there's a question that I usually do to everyone, but I usually leave it a little bit further and would be something related to that. And I'm still going to leave it for a little bit later in the show, but I'm going to need to ask Bart again. I'm going to need to go to Bart again, and I'm going to need to ask him about ice skating. How did ice skating start it? You started oh. first as an inline skater, right? Yeah, yeah. I started first as an inline skater, and then um, uh, I always watch, like, uh, in Belgium, you also have the Dutch television. Um, we received that as well, and I always watch... Uh, ice skating, long track skating from since I'm, I was young because uh, Chad Hedrick, he competed, Alexis Contain was already competing before I, so we we were always interested in how do the other guys, the other in-ice skaters, how they do, they do they do it on, uh, on the ice? And um, of course, I was going pretty good on Europe in junior division and I was always mm -hmm. also competing against Koen Verwey. He's a, he's a Dutch, Dutch skater, but also he was a Dutch inline skater. And uh, I used to beat him on inlines. And then I was like four months later, I saw him racing on, on long track and uh, being in the top five of the Dutch nationals. So really, really strong. And then I start thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I should switch in uh, some years to, to ice skating. And then my first world championships was in China for inline skating, where I won a gold medal. And then I, after that, I said, okay, now we, now I try ice, and um, that's how it started. Yeah. <laughs> 2000, <laughs> 2010. So it's exactly like ten years ago since uh, my first race was, like two days ago. Was, two days ago, ten years ago was uh, was my first race on the ice. Yeah. Okay, and. Was it also two days ago or yesterday that you broke a new personal record? <laughs> yesterday, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, we don't have many many races now because of COVID, um, but we have some test session, sessions here in Hereveen. And uh, I had a 3K on the program um, and went actually pretty, pretty good. Um, new personal records. I was uh, 0 0.4 seconds above the track record from Sven Kramer. So yeah, it was a, it was a good race for me. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Jason, are you on ice too? Uh, normally, yes. No, oh, yes. With the COVID is a little bit later than normally. So uh, I have to see when I go. And, but normally, yes. Okay. But you, you do see like... How do you do your high skating season? I'll get to Bart in a second, but how do how do you get your high skating season? Do you are you any time of the year able to do both, or just explain it for someone that has no idea about it? Well, normally I just finish uh, like last year. I just finished the uh, worlds, did one marathon in between, and then directly 
did go to uh, um, Salt Lake City, the ice, and then I didn't skate anymore until, I don't know, like maybe one time in the two weeks I skated or something. But for the rest, I just did ice skating. All okay. season, I think. So in t that would be 2019, right? Yeah. yeah. So in 2019, for uh, uh, Chandrine, you are you on ice too? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to make the exact same question to all of you. Like, if there would be a percentage of time that you guys are on, like 100% would be time on skates. I want to know what's the percentage on inline skates and what's the percentage on ice. Sandrine, ladies first. <laughs> um, basically, for me, I started on inline in February or March. Last year was February. This year is probably going to be more March or later. And then I'm full on inline until um, uh, September. And then I start full on ice. So then from September back to February or March, I'm only doing ice. So I don't skate inline in between and I don't do ice in the, in the summer normally. That's how I okay. like it because switching is still really challenging so if i do some inline it's more for fun and i won't do like real training or anything okay what about you bart um it's pretty similar actually like um i go on ice no um i start inline skating for usually first of april because the season is until half of march for ice and then first of april back on inlines and um this year, actually, I went from the 1st of August on the ice, which was really early. But usually, it's only starting uh, in September, like 1st of September. And then, uh, then I prepare myself for the, for the ice season. There's two exceptions in the ice season. Um, the Berlin Marathon, this one. <laughs> this, uh, I do the Berlin Marathon the 28th of August, uh, at 28th of September, usually. Um, and yeah, usually the three weeks before I'm already like ice skating full time, but uh, I like this race so much. So I always prepare myself to be there in a, in a decent shape. And then um, also in the past, I always went in the winter to Portugal. Like uh, every winter I went like the last two weeks or last week of the year. So in December, Lagos. I go to Lagos and... Um, have a really hard training camp on my inline skates for the second part of the ice season because I feel training in the sun on uh, on inlines it's the thing that I love most. Um, so yeah, it makes me it gives me a good feeling and makes me stronger for the second part of the ice season also. So to the two of you guys, if you put a, if you put on a percentage, like apparently to Sandrine it's like 50-50, right? To you would uh, be yeah. around the same. You would would you say that it's about fifty fifty too? I think if it's in hours, it would be like sixty on inline and forty on ice because I just do more trainings on inline skates like during the week than um, than the amount of trainings that I do on the ice. Like on ice skating, it's usually four times in one week that we do on the, uh, that we skate, and inlines it can be every day, sometimes two times uh, in the day. So uh, I, I would say sixty to forty. Is it is it any limitation because of the track or what makes it to skip like more days of training? Um, it's a combination of um, availability of the track, but also, um, yeah, for the technique, you want to be a little bit more rested and you want to be, yeah, you want to have good technique and efficient to be on the ice. And um, that's why we don't train every day two times on the ice and you... Yeah, you want to be rested for the next session, kind of. Yeah. That's the difference. On, on inline, I can be really tired and still go hard. <laughs> okay. Doesn't it's a, matter it's so a completely, much. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because the technique is not as important, right? Every slight, every slight, of course, it's very important, but from what I see and not from personal experience, technique on ice would not go a bad technique on ice would not go well and the bad technique no. on skate would 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 be more like a worse performance but a bad technique yeah. on ice would not just be the performance yeah true and i think you can compare it with uh 
a little bit with um, cycling. Like if you have a bad technique on the on the bike when you're doing a time trial, you're going nowhere. Like uh, there are some guys in cycling who push the highest watts, but they are like one minute behind. Um, so a really good technique is really important for a time trial. And if you are the strongest guy, but you stay in the peloton half of the time, and then at the end you do a breakaway, then it's different. You inline skating has to be less efficient, I think, and less perfect compared to, to ice skating. Yeah. Okay. We're talking about efficiency and I'm going to need to bring gear. Okay. okay. You all, you guys all skate for, for power slide. Uh, I'll ask you, each one of you, what's the exact setup that you guys are skating? Obviously, wheels and frames will differ from if you're doing a marathon. or. But if you can just give us a little bit of a idea, what's your favorite material from what you have to choose from the power slide world? Because you guys are somehow, not somehow, you guys are connected to power slide. So, Jason, what's your favorite setup at the moment? Oh, for trainings, for sure, it's 125. Uh, 125 wheels uh, because it's nicer to train and it's easier. You have, don't have to switch all the time uh, from marathon skate to 125 wheels. But in season, I prefer to stay on uh, 110 millimeters until uh, World Championships. Maybe you do one or two sessions on uh, one, 125 wheels. But uh, yeah, before Worlds, I usually only skate on 110, even on a marathon skate because it's harder. And, uh, then the marathon was, was a little bit easier when you go on 125. So, yeah. And uh, going a little bit more specific on the wheel, which wheel do you prefer exactly? Not just the, the width, but you have a couple of different wheels from Matter that you guys can choose from. I know that you guys have different profiles. You have like the, the spikier one, the rounder one. Do you have any wheel which you prefer for, or it really depends on the situation for you? I know some people only yeah. like certain types. So. Yeah, yeah, on track for sure I like purple, the green ones for a long track. These are the cheater team purple of one for, a long, for the long races. But for the short races, I like the blue propels. So yeah, it depends on the, the race and the track also. <laughs> And 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 for as for boot, what are you using a Trinity, a Trinity boot, or are you just using a regular one ninety five boot? Uh, now I use one ninety five, uh, okay. but I can skate on uh, one twenty uh, one on Trinity also. But I prefer now one ninety five. Okay, Sandrine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm on McCargo Customs, but I'm just on the on the normal, not on the Trinity, because um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet, so I can't comment on the Trinity. I also think I have really small feet, so I'm not even sure it fits on my foot, <laughs> the, the Trinity system. Um, You're going to have the screws in front on the nails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I'm on a, a 3 times 110 frame, so I have a 100 millimeter wheel. Um, I've tried four times 110 a couple of times, but it just doesn't suit me. It doesn't suit my strengths. So that's why I keep going back to the three times 110. But I'm actually on a, on an older frame too, because I, I like the more flexible frame. So I'm not on the, on the newest frame, so a little bit old. I don't even think they are for sale anymore. Um, and then for wheels, um, I would have to go for the standard just on the road, the G13. So I'm on three times 110 and one 100 G13. Um, only okay. for Berlin, only for Berlin, I'll switch to the 125s because um, the race pace is so much higher. And um, then you just really need the, the speed that the 125 brings. Yeah, it's just like the momentum. It's more, it's not like the acceleration, but the momentum is going to be. And what, what uh, about you, Bart? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, um, sorry, Sandrine. Do you want to keep? Do you want to keep going, Sandrine? You had anything no, no, else? No. I, I was just agreeing <laughs> with what he <you> said. <laughs> sorry, Bart. Sorry. Um, I got this year the new uh, Macago Ultra Light boot, um, and I've been like the last years. I was always a little bit struggling with the fit of the boot and and um, how that how it skated and how it felt because um, I had the feeling I that I wanted a little bit more feeling out of my boot. And um, last year in Barcelona, I 
me, Felix, Matthias, and uh, Sergio, we sat down to talk about the boot and see where we can improve more and more. And also in Berlin, Sergio was there too. We also talked about the boot. Um, and then uh, this year in February, I received the result of, of our talk, talks and it was this ultra light boot. And uh, for me, it's, uh, I could say the best boot I ever skated on. And uh, it's not really like a, a sales uh, talk that I want to do now, but it's uh, I really, I have a lot more feeling than I had the past years. And, and for me, it's, yeah, I really like this boot. And also the stiffness is still the same, but the the weight is a lot less than how it was. In is the it past. the one that has the X with the with the? Yeah, I think it's yeah. Some yeah, what's it's it's just carbon or it's like what's inside no, it's, that? It's just carbon. Like there are some oh, some uh, carbon tubes that he made. Tubes, in the, yeah, yeah, in the in the carbon, which makes it stiff at the places where you want it. Um, instead of using more and more layers of carbon, so he can use less layers now and may use the tubes for uh, reinforcement. And um, like that, the boot is a lot lighter, of course, but also the upper, the upper ladder. Um, he changed the upper ladder with less reinforcements. Um, and because of that, the, you can tight the boot a lot better. I, I have the feeling and it also gives you more feeling with, uh, with the ground. And uh, the combination of both, for me, it's, uh, yeah, it feels like a total different boot, actually. And That's, I'm really that happy makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's it's it, really in small details, but the different feeling you get out of it is uh, it's big, I think. And um, yeah, I, I really like the boot now, and uh, I'm sad I haven't raced more races on it than than we could this year. But uh, yeah, I did some two races on them, two wins and two good ones. So yeah, it's a good boot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's. But what, I was going to say something else, and I will get back to what I was laughing about, but. It's funny because the the whole stringer I don't know if you call, if you call it stringer on skates but it's a technology that it's used in other sports For example on bodyboards they use those yeah. carbon tubes on the inside to to increase the rigidity of the product and that's yeah. that's a very smart way to do it I don't know if it yeah. wasn't done before yeah well, they've, they they have smart. done it already in the in the past with power slides okay. so i think they used to have a triple x boot also uh, one of the first ones was also with the, the x on the bottom but now he he didn't only use the x on the bottom but all all around the boot he uses it so also on the back and um yeah first it it looked really cool so when i got to receive the boot at home i was like okay that's this one is cool um, no, I don't want to then, skate. I want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> but then I skated on it, and the the feeling was even better than how it looks. So uh, I was I'm really happy with this one. That's cool. Is is that a Trinity boot or also a 195? It's a 195 boot, also. Yeah, I've uh, used okay. in the past Trinity, but uh, now I'm uh, I'm on the one what 25, uh, 195 because of the yeah I think also because of the ultra light to make it as light as possible, and I I kind of had the ID and. We, we all had at the idea when we sat down that when you switch from 125 to 110, it feels kind of heavy because uh, you, now you have four wheels and it's only 80 grams, I think, the difference. But it, the, the, the 80 grams is already a lot. Uh, one wheel more or yeah. less, it, it's, a, it's a lot. And then we start thinking if we can take this weight somewhere else, it must must give a, a really good feeling, and we the, the the boot we have now is eighty or seventy grams lighter than the previous one, and I had the same feeling. Now you, when I skate on one ten, it's the same weight that you have compared in the other years with one twenty five, and yeah, it just helps you with acceleration out of the corner when you're on a really tight track. You have to accelerate really fast out of the corner. And the lighter your boots, the the easier it is to to have fast feet and to to go hard, for sure. And it, it makes total sense what you're saying of uh, all the um, how, how can you call it like the extra leather that you would have yeah. just to protect the boot. When we're talking yeah. at the level of skating that all of you guys are, it's yes, it can happen. The boots can be completely ruined yeah. if you had like a bad fall. But at the highest level, it's it shouldn't matter yeah, uh, that's you, what I also, you want performance yeah yeah you, we want performance and it's the same with for example again cycling they they don't have pads on the on the shoots or they don't have 
reinforcement on the on the on the frame um, because it might break when you crash. No, it, when you don't crash, it has to be light, fast, and strong. And that's what I want also with the material we have now. If it if we crash and it's some damage, it's we're sad, of course, but it's for the performance and we yeah it has to be good for for the world championships for the race you want to compete in for sure you guys are world champions <laughs> so you guys need to have the best now yeah. what frame do you prefer like sandrine was saying that she prefers a more flexible one would you do you also prefer a more flexible more comfortable one or you want extra stiffness for extra push i prefer more Stiffness. Um, I use the triple X frame, um, so in that way, I yeah, I like to have my feeling in the boots and less in the in the frame because yeah, it's just I'm always I've been used to that my my whole life in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Before power slide a long time ago, um, I was sponsored by Kadamotis and they have really stiff like super stiff frames, also with the the tube. So yeah, I learned to skate on a, on a frame like that, and uh, now I, I keep preferring the the stiff frames. Yeah. I'll still need to go back to that frame, to that Kato Models <laughs> frame about the the ones with the the dual box, right? Dual so box, yeah. We'll get that. Just just tell me about wheels. I know because I know that you've been skating on matters. You you were in fact. Let's not just go around it because it's the truth. The reason why when twenty five. People were still doubting a, a lot about 125, and you won. You you made less than one hour at the Berlin Marathon, and you said next year, I'm gonna do it even better. And then you went 56 or 57, 56 something. Yeah. And that's I was working with Power Slide back then, and the sales of the wheels just went up the roof. And back then there was no one else also making 125 that was the beginning of 125 and there was basically no competition what's your favorite wheels because power slide has so i know that you skate a lot of 125s and power slide has such a has so many so much experience with 125s what's your favorite wheel from there oh it's a it's a difficult question um because every 125 wheel that we have now at power slide for me it has a reason so it would be uh, if, if from my point of view it's stupid to make a wheel that i don't use so i don't care about the, the bad wheels but now all the good wheels like all the wheels we have in power side now in matter um every 125 wheel i can use in a race but it would be in a different race like for example berlin marathon nine out of ten i would always use the the um, the chr with the white profile so the the blue ones um okay. because yeah you want to have a it's, it's a the rounder race. one right yeah yeah it has the it's a really fast race and if you have to sprint at the end it's the best way to to sprint at the end and um with the high pace you have over there you just want to have a a good uh yeah the best wheel and the most secure wheel i think that's the chr with the, the white profile but then other races um where i want more roll i use the disc so the same uh, white profile, the blue ones, but mm -hmm. with the, the hub is a disc, like uh, it's, it, it doesn't yeah. have the, the holes in there. And like then, a uh, cycling, like a bike wheel. Yeah, for example. Yeah. <laughs> Aero wheel. And if I plan to do a breakaway, then you want to have the, the skinny one, the G13. And then uh, that's, that's the fastest, I think, for a long time. If, if we want to have a high pace for a long time, and I think if you are a recreational skater and you want to race the Berlin Marathon in a as fast as possible time, that's the way to go. The the G thirteen small profile and uh, yeah, that's that it rolls just the best out of all of them. Good. Now there is something which is quite interesting. I'm pretty sure most of the people that are listening to these up until now it's been almost fifty minutes, and without people interacting because there's something happening with YouTube that is not allowing people to comment. We right. have about I don't know maybe about seventy, eighty people watching this live, but none of them can comment on YouTube because there's something happening with YouTube. Okay. There's nothing that we can do about it. But if anyone wants to to comment or make any question, they can always go to the Facebook and put on a comment but usually helps more the show if people watch it on youtube because youtube is going to suggest this to more people after the show blah 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 all that now 
what I wanted to get before I make it a question about the Kato Motors is bearings. A lot of people usually think the most important thing is bearings. And funny enough, we have three world champions speaking about their setups, and none of you guys spoke anything <laughs> that special about bearings, you know? So, Jason, what bearings are you using? Do you really uh, care about it that much? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I want uh, the best bearings. Uh, because, yeah, you can feel it, definitely, definitely feel it. Uh, if you have good or bad bearings. Uh, so I use uh, Wicked HCR bearings. Mm -hmm. and these ones are pretty good for me. I know. Those are manually tuned in Switzerland. Each, oh, nice. each, each bearing it's checked <laughs> by hand in Switzerland. I actually, I was still working with Powerfly when they came out. Uh, what about you, Sandrine? Yeah, I use the same, the ceramics from Wicked. Um, they came out, uh, three years ago or two years ago, not so really mm -hmm. long ago. And they make mm -hmm. a huge difference. They roll so nice and so smooth and I really love them. So I only I only use them for my best races. So if I have one set <laughs> for the year, I'll use them at Worlds, at Berlin and at Europeans. And I'll save I'll save them. So they are perfect and new for my most important races because they they feel oh. so good. How long would a set of bearings would last you? I have no idea. I'm sorry. I I really have no idea. How much? How long would it last you? A set of bearings. Um. Usually, I have um like my normal race bearings that I use for the Euro Cups and stuff, and one set of the really good race bearings that I use for World Championships and Berlin. Okay. So two sets a year, basically, and then those move into training bearings the year after normally. Okay, and 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 do your friends love to be your friends when it comes to gear? You know, like when they're not your training gear, do they do they become someone's best bearings? Uh, no. Usually, I use the the training stuff until you really can't use them anymore, until they're really <laughs> messed up. So I keep okay. I keep my I keep my things for a really long time normally. Okay. What about you, Bart? What bearings do you use? Um, I use the Swiss bearings from PowerSide. Uh, I, don't, I think we get Swiss. They, we have them for a few years now. Um, yeah, the one with seven, uh, six, uh, it's, I think they have seven uh, balls, six or seven yeah, balls. Is that seven, it? I think, yeah. And yeah. Uh, they are not ceramic. Um, and that's usually my problem because I only use them also for the really, really important races. And uh, then you end the season with uh, Berlin Marathon at the end of the year with uh, rain, and then <laughs> your wheels are destroyed. <laughs> no, your bearings are destroyed. So, um, yeah, that's. I think my bearings. I usually I can do two or three years with them um, because I only use them for the important races. But um, after two, like in between two years, usually I use them one time in the rain, and then. Then I start feeling the difference. If if I don't have to use them in the rain, they keep going for a long time. But if they had one one rain race, it, yeah, they just get damaged too much. And even if I clean them right after them, it's still it's not the same. There's still there always stays dirt in there, and um, yeah, that's that's what yeah. I kind of hate. But rain yeah, race, you won't make them harder. factory again. Yeah, no, no. And, <laughs> That's, I, I really have a hard time to, to do that. Or I, it's also maybe a mental thing that uh, it keeps in my it stays in my head that I uh, that I've raced with them in the rain. But and it's also always when I go to a rain race, like or to a rain race, and when it's raining, in my rain wheels there are bearings in there that I would use only for the rain. And then before the race, I think, oh no, I I need my best bearings. I take them out, put the best bearings in there because. At that point, <laughs> the race is the most important one. And then after the race, I'm like, oh, now, now there's... I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I shouldn't have <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I need to go this way too, which is like you spoke about uh, you being part of Katamoto's and skating the, the dual box frame. Obviously, some of you guys, or maybe even all of you guys, have been related to other brands, right? Um, oh, Sandrine, not. <laughs> no, no, Sandrine? Uh, 
<laughs> no, I skated for my club and then I went straight for a smaller power slide team, like a more local power slide team. And then I went into the real power slide team. So I've never been. Okay, there. so I'm going to make the question to you first and then I'll make it to, to Jason and to, to Bart. What about proposals? Have you had proposals from other brands to skate for them? And uh, even if you add, if you add, what made you stay on power slide? Uh, no, I haven't had any um, concrete proposals from other brands, but I think maybe because I portray that they don't really have a chance anyway, because I'm so <laughs> happy at power slide. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I've just, it's just grown on me power slide since I was really young. My brother was also in the power slide team and I knew how good they were to him. So then I always had a really good feeling about it. And then um, when I went into the smaller local team, it was a really good experience. And then I moved into the world team and I've always been treated really, really good. So I also, I've never really had the idea to look at anything else or to speak to anyone else. So in that way, I and haven't had proposals either. How do you feel power slide without Scott and now with Pascal? Do you feel a difference? Well, it's definitely definitely different. They're two completely different people. Um, some things were better before, some things are better now. And I think that's totally normal. And um, it's going to need some adjustments because Scott was a really big part of the team. But yeah. now we work with Pascal and it, it, I'm sure it will also work and we can still be a great team. Yeah, but you guys haven't been able to be tested with the whole pandemic thing. And we'll get to the pandemic in a second. J <laughs> Jason, uh, have you had proposals since you you joined Power Slide? You were like the, the baby yeah. on the, the world team still. But have you had proposals or what made well, you choose Power Slide? Do you had other proposals before? No, not, not really. I think it's the same like with Sunbin. Uh, I would never leave Power Slide. So. And I think everybody knows. <laughs> When somebody is with power side, they will never leave. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll check that in a second. Is that his part? Would you never leave? Uh, the chances are really high for sure. Yeah, uh, I had some proposals in the past, but um, yeah, like both of them said, it feels like a family. Um, and I think I've I've always been a person like that. Like, yeah, I've there's some kind of loyalty that you also create with uh, with the brand and with with the whole team and it was actually also in the past when i was with kanamotis um i got the the, the ask from or the question from power sites maybe one or two years before that already to to join the team but yeah i it was hard to imagine something different so um i couldn't imagine changing team or anything and then Eventually, PowerSlide could convince me to to change change teams, and uh, of course, it was still one of maybe one of my best uh, decisions ever for for my inline career. Because uh, yeah, the team PowerSlide is for sure the the best team in the world, and probably some other guys will uh, argue with that. But I think most of the people would uh, agree that yeah, the way PowerSlide is um doing everything for for inline skating and especially speed skating is uh yeah non, non compared i think in the in the business awesome i would never say anything against it especially with you guys because you're like the gold <laughs> from matthias and i don't want matthias to to kill me the next time i see him but sometimes just like you did sometimes and i'm not saying these to you guys but the change that you made Sometimes it's needed to make us progress. And I'm not saying that that's what you guys need to do at all. But sometimes that's the type of way that makes people move. Like, you know, change. Change makes people... Change is a, a lot of times evolution. Evolution doesn't always mean best results. It doesn't always mean performance. Because, like, as, a, as an example, you are 29, right? Yeah. And one of the questions that I said I would do later in this show, I'm going to do it now. What's going to be happening with Bart in five years from now? What's oh. where's Bart swings in five years? That's a good question. Um, I, I hope still um, being a strong athlete in, in inline skating and in ice skating. Like, uh, of course, 
I always look uh, towards the next Olympics. So for me, the Olympic Games are a really big goal. And, and that's why I'm now fully focused on Beijing. Um, so I don't really have big plans yet after Beijing because I'm just 100% focused on, on that goal. Um, so what's where I'm going to be in five years? Uh, I, I don't have... I don't have any clue, actually. <laughs> I, I just hope I still um, love what I'm doing. And um, at this point, sports is what I love most. So um, probably if it's still the same at that point, I hope I, I would be still competing in, uh, in the boat sports. Yeah. Let, let me tell Sandrine and Jason something interesting. It didn't happen to me, but it happened with one of the organizers of this show. I don't know if you're aware of that, Bart, but... Uh, someone from the Portuguese team was lost in Belgium and they were trying to get to, I don't know if they were trying to get to a track or something. And they were saying an inline skating track and they couldn't explain what inline skating was. <laughs> no one knew what was inline skating, but when they say Bart Swings, people knew who Bart Swings was. So people know Bart Swings more than they know inline skating. <laughs> How does that feel? How does that feel that people know you but don't know, like they know you for, obviously they know you for ice skating, a lot of people. Yeah, of yeah. the olympics but does that feel weird yeah it feels pretty weird i i wouldn't expect that for sure <laughs> <laughs> okay so sandrine in five years from now we're gonna have a, a scientist on the field is that it um in the ideal plan probably not because just like bart has now his eyes on beijing I'm already kind of getting excited for the 26 Olympics. That's the reason okay. that I started ice skating. So um, okay. my long-term plan goes to sports until at least 2026. So in five years' time, I would still be skating ice. Top in form. Time. Yeah, in, top form, in five years, top form. <laughs> what about you, Jason? When is the when is the Maybe to Jason, because you, you're still mini Bart, I'm going to put 10 <laughs> years. In 15 years from now, where's, are you going to be? No, you are already obviously Jason, but you're going to have mini Bart and Bart 2 behind and you're going to be just, you are already Jason, but people will not even remember about you being mini Bart or Bart 2. What's going to happen in, in 15 years? Any idea? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I just hope uh, winning a lot. Uh, I couldn't say. I think 15 years is a long time, but I will try my best. And I hope uh, become a, a lot of times world champion. That's what I hope. <laughs> okay. So we got some questions. Not a lot, but we had some people that came and made questions on on Facebook. Uh, Bart, are you going to, to be at the World Championships in Colombia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. hard question um, oh, uh, I've been thinking about it a lot and uh, I, I actually I don't know yet um, with everything that's going on now with COVID and, and how everything is changing from week to week I have no clue yet what I will do in, in September next year um, of course it's not perfect for me um, would be better if it was in, in July or in August if, if I look to the to the ice set schedule and um, next year for sure my my biggest goal is Beijing so uh, if it doesn't fit in my plan for towards Beijing then I won't be racing there but let's hope fingers crossed that I can race in, in Colombia and uh, then go to to Beijing and get some uh, good Olympic results yeah. I hope so I hope so for sure Okay. But I can't promise anything, sadly. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it puts you in a in a in a different situ in a difficult situation. Yeah, yeah it's changed in the whole. Yeah, and I I was really really looking forward to it this year. Um, I, I was yeah was it gonna be my most important goal uh, of the year to go to the all the uh, to go to the World Championships in Colombia. I've done it two times already. World Championships over there, and it's. It's the, the best feeling you can have in, in our sport, I think. If you win there and you, yeah, you race in Colombian soil, soil it's, yeah, it's just it's the best feeling. So 
yeah, it will be a very hard decision uh, to make if I go or if I don't go. But yeah, we'll see. We'll, we will see in the future. Yeah, it's a left time. Yeah. Um, Sandrin, how is your relationship with Lola Brigida? Because <laughs> you guys, <laughs> it's, I mean, not as a, not as a personal relationship but that we can you can say that you can say about your personal relationship with her too but how, how is it how do you look at her before the race because the battle is on <laughs> and it's like it's a brand battle too so it's the whole thing is it's a full-on battle <laughs> um how do like personal relationship i can't like i can't really say that we have a personal relationship we're competitors we don't really talk off the track, but I have a lot of respect for her and for her results. And I think she makes me a better skater. And I think I challenge her as well to make her a better skater. And um, like at a world championship, um, you don't look at one person in particular. There's so much talent on the line. There's Colombians, there's other skaters. Um, but at Europeans, it's kind of different because it's usually the long distance races is a one on one and it's very difficult to race like that. But I, I think it just pushes both of us to keep working hard and to be the best us because if we're not at 100%, we're going to get beat by the other. And, uh, okay. I think that's, it's, it's kind of cool. It makes us better really. So I don't, I don't have a personal problem with her or anything at all, actually. Of course, you said actually quite something quite funny because I wanted the conversation to shift that way, and it's automatically you went that way, so it's even easier for me. You said at long distance on Europeans, it ends up happen even more often. And I was going to make you a question, which is: it seems like you're investing a lot more in short distance. Is that something that is really happening? Are you really trying to focus more on short distance races, or? Not really. No, actually not. I'm, I haven't changed anything in training. Not at all, actually. Um, I have always been an all-rounder. I've always trained all-round. Because at the end of an elimination race, you also need to put down a 15 low to win the race. So I've always mm -hmm. done, done sprint sessions. But as I've gotten older, I just happen to start to sprint better. And if I feel like I have a chance at a European Championship to win a gold medal... I'm not just going to leave it there. So then I'll start and I'll do it. And um, that's really just what's been happening the last few years. But I think like my body is still a long distance skater mostly or middle distance because the 1K stays my favorite race. And I just like skating. So I do everything if I can. Awesome. I, I need to now, there's not, that's not like a personal question. Um, to Bart, um, <laughs> I've seen a, a, a me and probably yeah. It's like no, it's, from, it's it's man. I'm I skate every day for okay. 37 years. I started when I was two and a half, and I never really stopped. So it's okay. 37 and something. I watched. I saw a video that a lot of people watched of like the Le Mans uh, lap, and oh, yeah. I don't know if it's realistic or not. Because sometimes the GoPro is not the most realistic thing, and the the speed that we're saying there was actually kind of insane for someone to be just skating. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> even got nervous here. For someone to be skating with such perfect technique and like nothing. If I'm not mistaken, the speeds were up the 70s, and you were just skating. But it's going downhill there. <laughs> yeah, I know it's going downhill, but I I'm I skate downhill very often. Okay. Yeah. And that's why, like, how do you train for it? Is there a specific train for keeping the skating? I, I'm asking that because I was actually speaking with an old speed skating friend of mine from my hometown today. And he was telling me that a couple of years ago, when we had Julio Ravazzi looking at some of the, the skaters from, from Portugal trying to to teach them a bit, if you can say. One of the things that 
he said that Portuguese skaters needed more was to actually skate downhill, but it's not like roll downhill, it's to skate downhill. Yeah. So this is something I, I wanted to know if that's part of your train, if you ever trained something like that. Yeah, actually, um, in preparation of, for example, um, yeah, um, world championships or big marathons like, uh, like Berlin, um, I do often downhill sprints. So I have a, a circuit in Belgium where it goes, yeah, pretty, pretty not not super steep down, but you can make easily like sixty k an hour or seventy k an hour. So it's yeah, it's over speed training, and and some people do it behind the car, but I have the feeling that if you do it downhill, um, that you have to be a lot more focused to keep that good position and to keep the good technique because. Um, yeah, because it's down here, so you go faster, easier. But it's when you do it behind a car, you only got like, get like sucked with the car, and that gives you the speed compared to going down here. You really have to stay low, keep, make your pushes good, and and keep pushing good. And um, yeah, those trainings I, I do to improve my sprints. Um, but yeah, it helps for sure also to uh, to maintain a high speed as well. Yeah. Okay, let me just ask, did, did you know what's the the downhill speed skating world record? No. <laughs> it's 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 137. It's a guy from okay. the US. His name is Gabe Holm and there's like a hill that everyone broke the record there it's in Canada. Okay. So crazy. maybe in a couple of years cuz <laughs> no, with sure that not. technique for <laughs> You know, you know that uh, Scott used to say that you you guys been in in Power Slide hometown, so you guys trained yeah. with Scott there. Most of you guys, I'm pretty sure. So probably you know the downhills that I'm talking about. That Scott and Matthias, Scott for someone listening to this who don't know, Scott used to be their team manager, was in charge of the whole Power Slide racing team. Matthias as the owner of Power Slide, yeah. which is by now they all know the company that you all guys will skate and work for somehow yeah. so they skate there very often and scott used to be very proud of him going up 100 k's per hour so that's why i was like maybe you you, you did it too uh, <laughs> now let me check my last questions that i had here for you guys and we need to finish with something which is the pandemic how have you guys been dealing with it jason have you been able to train obviously not normal but have you been able to to go around it in a way that you can train and you i know that you guys have been somehow racing and in some places people are really not allowed to well in in belgium it was actually okay i think to train you could still bike a lot so for me it was okay and uh it's like i can go on the highway directly for my own so I go like 15 minutes on the highway and I have a circuit where I can train. So for me, it was actually not too bad. I could still do all my trainings and I even trained harder, I think, than the year before on long distance. Yeah. Because but how do you train? But how do you train without the usually the usual goal that you have? Like if you have the, the worlds or if you have heroes or something as goals and if, if they're not happening the same, is the motivation still there for you? This year, uh, I was still there. I don't know. I didn't really need motivation for trainings. Uh, it wasn't like it wasn't like training super hard as usual, but still, I I had enough motivation to train uh, hard and good. So I think it was still okay for me. Okay. What about you, Sandrine? How did you deal with it? The whole COVID situation. Um. Well, actually, I got a little bit. Uh, lucky in a way because i was coming back from an injury um last year actually a little bit over a year ago and i finished the ice season but it hadn't properly healed 100 percent. so then when i went on on inline it just came back and it, it bothered me all the time so i couldn't even like if there had been inline races i wouldn't been able to perform properly so this gave me a chance to really do my revalidation, my rehab properly. And at the same time, um, I had enough motivation because the ice season was coming. 
I always thought the ice season is coming, so I need to keep training. The ice season is going to be there. If there's no inline, there's going to be ice. So that was good enough um, motivation. And then when it turned out that the ice season wasn't going to be there, I thought, oh, but the next inline season is going to be there. So uh, really, when you put in training, you always get something in return, even if it's not yeah. for the year that you're training in, it's for the next year. So in that way, I never really, really struggled with the training. I was focused on um, healing my ankle and then just staying in shape so I could be ready in case that there was a race. And in Belgium, mm -hmm. like Jason said, we, we could just keep training outside. Um, for me, it was sad because there was no club training, so everything alone. Uh, which is very different for me because usually I just train with a, a group of guys that make me faster. Um, but in the end, we we were one of the lucky ones that we were still allowed outside on the bike, on the inlines, everything. So. Okay. I'm pretty sure you guys, like, you love to skate as the whole slogan is, but, like, if you guys love to skate so much, you always find the motivation for the the next day on skates and whatever. You'll You always find a way. Um, Bart, yes. How are you dealing with it? Because the thing is, he, Sandrine said something which is quite interesting, and I also added here on my notes to ask you guys about, which is the amount of times you guys spend with physiotherapy. It's that something that you guys really pay a lot of attention to, yeah. or not that much. And I'm, I was going to ask you about your motivation. How was the training during the pandemic? And now I'm going to add you the the physiotherapy, if, if it's something that you, you do very often or how do um, you deal with it? Yeah, with the COVID situation, um, it was actually pretty similar compared to uh, Sandrine, besides that I didn't have an injury, but that, yeah, I would just, the inline season was, uh, was pretty quick cancelled. So for me, it was just all eyes on the ice season and uh, I wanted to be as good as possible in shape for the ice season. So um that's why i yeah i had a really strong summer because we didn't have many races so that's why we i could because if you have races you always have to rest a little bit for the race and a race is not as hard in as a as a full weekend of training so now this year i could just train from beginning of april all the way until august every weekend day in day out and um i actually was in in tests like i do a lot of testing on the bike and uh, testing on inline skates and um in my tests i was stronger than i have ever been so that was uh, pretty nice to see um so yeah i kind of used the opportunity of uh yeah yeah i saw an opportunity in uh, in the covid situation there you couldn't do all the races but you can still train and you can work harder as before so as an athlete, you just try to improve as much as possible. And now it's actually kind of the same in the, in the winter. Um, I don't have really big goals yet. Um, for now, we can work towards European Championships in uh, January. Um, but every day that I'm on the ice now, I want to improve and um, I want to be a better ice skater and improve my technique. So because I'm sure if the better I get this year and um, it will help me a lot for, for next year. And of course, next year is going to be super important with, uh, with the Olympics. And um, so that's, that's my motivation, actually. The motivation lies in uh, 2022. Um, and if you want to be good there, you have to train now. I'm uh, pretty okay. convinced about that. <laughs> okay, we have a question now on the screen, which is obviously from Elder, which is... The person <laughs> that is organizing all this is, is obviously curious about something which, in my opinion, let me just make the question and then I will comment before I will expect you to answer, which is a couple of months ago, Felix uh, from Germany, power slide, team skater, world champion, um, did the world hour record on a speed skating track, on an inline speed skating track. Obviously, there was a couple of... It was a challenge for him. Obviously, it was a way for him to keep himself motivated to keep on training and, and at the same time, a way to promote skating. Yeah. Is that something that any of you guys, not just Bart, but is that something that any of you guys would see yourself trying in the future? Bart. Uh, yeah. 
a few days, uh, a few years ago, we we already have been talking about it uh, with PowerSlide. So uh, also with with Felix, with Scott, with Matthias, um, because that was the time when it started again in uh, in cycling uh, when they start beating the the hour record. And um, but for yeah, it sounds a lot easier than it is because uh, yeah. <laughs> The, how it Felix doesn't sound did. easy at all. It doesn't no, sound easy no, at all. But yeah, he broke the record, and and some people would say, yeah, but it's in Geisinger, but it's yeah, it's super hard, I think, and it's one hour full focused. Um, um, so I'm. It, you already also have to plan it in your schedule. You cannot. I cannot say it. Okay, tomorrow I do it. No, it's it has. <laughs> you have to be very very hard uh, prepared for it and very focused on it and. That's why I, I won't try it in the in the next few years because I have a bigger goal. Maybe in five. Maybe, Maybe in five, five years. <laughs> that would be possible. That like if we talk about five years from now, I would have tried it. I'm not gonna say I beat it because Felix did a, a very hard job. So uh, he set the, the level really high, and I think that's also one of the reasons why not many people are gonna try soon because <laughs> it's so hard yeah. from Felix. Yeah. Yeah, and for whoever knows Felix, for whoever saw Felix skating, to see him struggling, because you, you you could see that it wasn't being easy at all. And wow. like when he started shifting this technique from the regular track technique to like just rolling through all like at least one of the one of the curves, you you, you could see. But it, that's when he started getting better. What about yeah. you, Jason? Is that something that you could imagine yourself doing? Uh, yeah, maybe in the future, but I'm not sure <laughs> if I can break it. <laughs> so at this moment, I'm sure I can't. Really sure, uh, because I can, I know our Felix can literally die ten times when he's skating. So at this moment, I'm sure I can't. Come on, yeah. you should just say I could easily just <laughs> just to make. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Sandrine? Um, yeah, it sounds really interesting. I don't know if it's something that I would be good at, but I would be willing to try. But like Bart said, you need to be focused on it. You need to be prepared. So I'm not going to take my skates and say, oh, in two weeks time, I'm going to just try it. It's something that you really need to plan. And right now, also with the inline and the ice, I don't see how I can fit it in my schedule. So it would be more for later, probably not anytime soon. Awesome. Okay, guys, I guess we're coming to an end. Uh, we have one last question, just asking if you guys are coming to the European Nationals in Portugal. I actually don't know the dates. So is that <laughs> something that you guys would... <laughs> I don't really know. Is that something that you guys would uh, be able to to manage with your schedules or it's not yet? I think so, yeah. I hope so. Probably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I think, some, uh, somewhere in July. So that should work. Yeah, it should be possible. Be nice. Perfect. Okay, guys, I need to say thank you. Thank you so very much. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I was having a good time. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I was having, it, it's a shame that we weren't able to, to allow people to, to comment on YouTube because it's usually how we get the most interaction. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people will watch this later on and in 10 years 15 years 20 years from now you got something to show your kids yes. not just race around the track it's also a funny thing i make videos almost every day and that's how i justify it to my wife so, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very very much for this time and good luck with all your projects and once okay. again thank you for helping us here with this We're almost coming to an end on this out of the box season one. We have one more episode in two weeks from now. And there will be a grand finale after the um, after next episode, but we can't tell you too much yet. There will also be season two. We're already planning season two. We'll be a bit different. We won't be talking just with, with different skaters from different teams, but I can tell you a lot more. If you want to know more, Here's what you got to do. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to subscribe to the channel. You're going to click on that bell button because the whole thing that we're doing here on this channel, this is not my channel. This is a channel 100% about speed skating. And on this channel, when there's uh, skate events, there will be broadcast 
um, there will be broadcast shows of the event. There will always be a lot more things happening. So if you enjoy speed skating, if this is your thing, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Make sure to follow Bart, Jason, and Sandrina on their social media. They're always publishing what they're doing, either ice, inlines, training, cycling, because all of these guys are amazing on bikes too. Yeah. And I've seen Bart, like, I've heard a lot of good things. And now lately I even saw, not not any of you guys, but like I've seen Felix on a bike campaign and it seems like you guys are all amazing on bikes. So the future is on. If it's not on inline skates, it's going to be on bikes. Yeah. <laughs> But I want everyone to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so very much and have a good week ahead. So thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.